Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video I will show you a game between Richard Retti and Geza Marozzi. This game was played in Berlin in 1920. Richard Retti had white pieces and he started with d4. Geza Marozzi played knight to f6. Even birds of the sky and beasts of the field know that Marozzi was a very strong player. Marozzi bind variation of the Sicilian defense is named after Marozzi. White to move c4 was played e6, knight to c3, d5, so we have queen's gambit declined. Bishop to g5, bishop to e7, e3, knight from b to d7, knight to f3, castling rook to c1. If bishop goes to d3, then d takes on c4 and the bishop must move again. So we have rook to c1, rook to e8. c6 is the most popular move nowadays. But Gesa Marozzi had a different plan. Rook to e8 was played, queen to e2, and now c5. It makes sense to open the files because white in the castle. And white must be very careful. Reti played c takes on d5. e takes on d5. D takes on c5, knight takes on c5, rook to d1, lining the rook with the black queen, queen to a5, bishop to b5, attacking the rook, rook to d8. Well, Marozzi didn't want to play bishop to d7, because he had a more exciting square for his bishop, and that is g4 square. So he played rook to d8. Reti casted king's side. Bishop to g4, pinning the knight. Who is better? White to black. Everything seems normal. Black didn't make any obvious bad move. Do you agree? But unbelievably, we have reached the critical position of the game with white to move. What would you do? Please pause and find the best move for white. Did you pause? What did you find? Reti spotted this amazing combination, starting with b4, forking the queen and the knight. Queen takes on b4. Black must take, what else? Otherwise he loses the knight. Queen takes on b4. What was the idea behind the pawn sacrifice? Can you see the idea? Reti continued with the rook to d4, attacking the queen. Queen to a5. What now? What did Reti have in mind when he sacrificed the pawn? Reti played. Rook takes on g4. Black to move. First move that comes to mind is knight takes rook. Instead, rook from d to c8 was played. Let's see what happens if knight takes on g4. If knight takes on g4, bishop takes on e7, and after rook from d to c8, queen to b2, and after knight to e6, bishop to b4, and white is better. Back to our game. Marozzi played rook from d to c8, lining the rook with the white queen and betting all the money on knight to e4. Bishop takes knight on f6. Knight to e4. If bishop takes on f6, then knight takes on d5 and white is winning. So we have knight to e4. Threatening rook takes knight and also knight takes bishop. How would you continue in this position? if you had white pieces. Reti played the obvious. Rook takes on g7 check. Black has no time to take on c3. King to f8. White played a move and black resigned. Unbelievable. What is the move? Reti played bishop d4 and Marozzi resigned. For the entertainment purpose, I will show you just one line. Well, 
The rumor says that after the game, Reddy was asked what he would do if Black captured the knight on c3 with the rook. And Reddy answered, I don't know, I'm only a visitor. But being a good sport, Reddy showed them a fun line. Rook takes on h7, Rook takes queen, Rook to h8, check, mate. Reti was a true legend, wasn't he? What do you think of this game? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.